In this video, we will take a look at the soldering process and how to use a multiple servo motor board with an Atmega-based Arduino Nano microcontroller. In one of my previous projects, I designed an ESP32-based board that allows multiple servo motor control, and I discussed how to control the board via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Some of my followers gave me the idea to design an Atmega-based version of this board. The new board I designed allows you to control up to nine servo motors and also allows you to control the motors wirelessly using the Bluetooth module mounted on it. If we take a closer look at the circuit diagram of the design, there is an adjustable voltage regulator module on the board. The converter module makes it possible to adjust the voltage in line with the power needs of the servo motors independently of the Arduino Nano. The required voltage level can be adjusted with the potentiometer on the module. A Skotky diode is added to the servo motor power line. Its function is to increase the reliability of the circuit by helping to control power line fluctuations, voltage reverse flow, and electromagnetic noise. I have also added two capacitors to the circuit. Servo motors can require large amounts of current during sudden movements. Capacitors can be used to meet such sudden power demands and stabilize the power supply and also help to reduce power supply fluctuations. I also added a resistor to each servo motor signal leg. The resistors act as a protection resistor in the circuit. The resistor protects the servo motor signal leg from overcurrent and harmful voltages by limiting the signal from the microcontroller in some way. Finally, since the servo motors and Arduino Nano share the power line of the circuit, a jumper is added to disconnect the power line to which the servo motors are connected when programming the microcontroller. The same applies to the Bluetooth module, since the TX and RX pins are busy during programming. A jumper was added to the Bluetooth power input to prevent communication errors, making it possible to cut the Bluetooth power during programming. Finally, a capacitor was added to the Arduino Nano Van supply input to reduce power fluctuations. If we take a look at the design of the printed circuit board, a two-layer board was preferred and the circuit elements and modules on the PCB were aimed to be easily removable and solderable. In addition, the width of the tracks that can be affected by high currents in the circuit was kept wider. Finally, the heat dissipation on the circuit board was optimized by applying ground copper area on both layers. The print quality is as important as the design of the printed circuit board. I have been successfully cooperating with PCBWay for printed circuit board printing services for many years. I regularly upload all necessary files and details of my projects to PCBWay's project sharing page. In this context, you can use the link provided to access the detailed information and design file of the project, review the project, and if you wish you can have this circuit board using only the PCB or assembled board services. If you have received the low-cost and high-quality PCBs, we can now move on to the soldering process. As a first step, I recommend placing and soldering some of the resistors connected to the servo motor signal legs. This way, you can avoid the complexity of the component legs. For soldering, you will need a basic soldering iron, solder wire, a stand, and the cutter. Touch the tip of the heated soldering iron to the pad and then apply the solder wire so that it makes contact between the pad and the component. Then use a cutter to cut the leg length of the components. Place the remaining resistors and continue the soldering process. Then place the diode on the board with the polarity on the correct side and solder it. Now let's move on to the male and female headers. You can mount the voltage module without headers, but I recommend using male headers to provide a space between the module and the board. This will avoid any heat from the module touching the board. First, four male headers are soldered to the module. Then all the other headers are placed and a pin of each header is fixed to the board with some solder on the tip of the soldering iron. In this way, when the back side of the board is rotated, all the headers are fixed and the soldering process can be easily completed.
Now, it is the turn of the capacitors. When placing the capacitors on the board, make sure that the polarity is correct. The side with the gray marking is the negative, in other words, the ground pole. Finally, you can complete the soldering process by placing and soldering the connector required for the power supply input. I recommend applying electronic cleaner to the back surface of the board and cleaning it with a PC solder brush. After soldering, make sure that the circuit power line provides the correct voltage. To do this, first adjust the potentiometer on the power module using a screwdriver to the output voltage level suitable for the power requirement of the servo motors. The potentiometer must be moved slowly and carefully as it requires a very fine adjustment. Next, check for the correct function of the jumper, which can interrupt and complete the power line to the servo motors. The circuit is powered via the connector. The microcontroller and servo motors are fed directly from this power supply. During programming or communication via USB, a servo motor power cutoff jumper is used to prevent the servo motors from drawing high current and damaging the microcontroller or computer. When the jumper is plugged in, power is supplied to the servo motors. When the jumper is removed, the power supply to the servo motors is cut off. This allows control and safe management of the servo motors. After testing the power supply of the circuit, let's move on to the multiple servo motor test. Nine micro servo motors with an average operating voltage of 5 volts are connected to the circuit. When connecting the motors, you need to pay attention that the pins are connected in the correct direction. The pin numbers to which the signal legs are connected are marked on the board, so the servo motor signal legs must match these pins. Next, open the shared source code. As much explanation as possible has been added when creating the code, so it will be easier for you to understand the code. The standard servo motor library has been added. An array for servo definitions has been created since multiple servos are used. Pin numbers to which servo motors are connected are defined. Two variables are defined for start and end positions. Also, one more variable was defined for delay time. In the loop section, two for loops are created so that the motors will rotate from the start to the end position and then back to the start position with the opposite rotation. After uploading the code and disconnecting the USB connection, we connect the power supply to the circuit. As you can see, the servo motors are not powered without the servo power jumper in place. An on-off switch is also preferable instead of a jumper. As observed, the circuit works well and provides a smooth movement even though the servo motors are all running at the same time. However, there is currently no load on the servos, so it will be necessary to wait and observe the next project to evaluate the actual performance. After checking that the servo motors are running smoothly, let's move on to the Bluetooth communication test. Insert the Bluetooth module into the circuit. Then remove the servo motor and Bluetooth module power jumpers and connect the microcontroller to the computer via the USB port. The important point here is that the Arduino Nano uses the TX and RX pins during code upload and the Bluetooth module also uses these pins. To avoid communication errors, the 5 volt power of the Bluetooth module is disconnected by removing the jumper. As long as the jumper is plugged in, the Bluetooth module continues to busy the TX and RX pins. Therefore, this power must be removed from the jumper or the Bluetooth module during code upload. When you take a look at the shared code, you will notice that it contains basic Bluetooth communication. In short, it reads the position values received via Bluetooth and moves the servo motor according to these values. Of course, an application is needed to send data via Bluetooth. In this project, App Inventor Platform was preferred to create a free and simple application instead of using a ready-made application. The UI of the application includes a list of devices, five direction buttons, and a direction slider. In the back end of the application, code blocks were created to list the devices, show the connection status, and communicate the positions of the slider and buttons. To get the app on your device, you can use the Android app option from the Build tab. Also, the project file of the application is shared, and you have the opportunity to import this file into App Inventor and edit it. Once you have the app, turn on your device's Bluetooth connection. 
Then, launch the application, click on the Bluetooth icon, and connect to the HC06 Bluetooth module among the listed devices. If a password is requested during the connection, complete the connection by entering the password 1234. When communication is established, you will see connection successful. You can now wirelessly control a servo motor or multiple servo motors via the application. As observed, the Bluetooth connection, the communication between the board and the app, and the servo motor movements are working perfectly. At this stage, the project has come to an end as the board is considered to be successfully completed. You can access all project details and files from the shared link.